Hi everyone and welcome to part two of the speed build for Desert Overlook which is a modern mansion that I'm building here in Oasis Springs. So last time we finished the whole exterior of the house and started on the furnishing and this time we'll of course be finishing up the furnishing and I'm really excited to share this part because there are some rooms in this house that I really love and I'm just looking forward to talking about them. But we are starting off with a gym which as I said in the last part was like part of what was originally going to be the garage but then I realized the garage was going to be way too huge if I included this as part of it so I just cut it off and made it into a gym, which is nice because I do like having home gyms. Like it's just a nice area to have for Sims to keep up on their fitness and all of that. Imagine that one of the owners of this house is really into exercising and all of that. And off to the side here, I also try to create a relaxing yoga and a medit. Well, it didn't really end up being a meditation area in the end because I had this meditation stool in here originally, but I just for whatever reason wasn't happy with how it looked. So I ended up just replacing it with another yoga mat. And it maybe would have been better to just keep the med meditation stool in since we already had two yoga mats outside because I just put them out there because they work really well as looking like beach house that someone had laid out on. And it's also just neat because you could have your Sims do yoga by the pool, which I imagine would be very calming. But anywho, due to the fact that there are four yoga mats on the slot, like maybe I should have just kept that stool in. But um, anyway, I'm still very happy with how it turned out. If you want to have the meditation stool in the house, then you can just go ahead and delete one of those yoga mats and replace it with the meditation stool in the end. And this was also the part of the build I started on after installing the most recent patch. So shortly you'll see me replace that bamboo bamboo plant, not bamboo plant, with one of the with a new potted plant that we got in the patch, which is awesome. Like I love like having different kinds of potted plants to use. And there's like like you probably noticed if you've watched enough of my builds that there's like two or three potted plants that I always use. So it's just nice to have another one that I really like in the rotation. So there you can see me putting that in. Then I stuck two of the bamboos in the two of the bamboo plants in the corners of the yoga area, which I thought would give it a very, you know, just help with the whole relaxing feel of it. But we are on to, or actually we're not onto the master bathroom yet, but uh there was where I went ahead and replaced some of those doors with the new sliding doors that we got with the patch, which I'm just really, really happy about. I'm just looking forward to, at some point in the future, like making more family type homes and being able to throw those in because like, like that's, that's just the kind of doors I think of when I think of like a door leading out to a backyard. And then we also did get the more Caribbean influence sliding doors with the most recent patch. So I wanted to put those to use in the, the tropical beach house that I'm going to be starting on building shortly. So I'm really looking forward to doing that and getting to put more of those items to use. But yeah, as I said, we are on to the master bathroom and this ends up having a similar light and breezy color scheme to the laundry room because I just really loved how that turned out. And I started this off with having the black floors, but then I was like, no, I just wanted to feel like more light and bright and calm. So I just switched it out for the white tile floors, which isn't something I usually do because I tend to use darker floor tiles in bathrooms. But with this build, I just want to do something a teensy bit different than, than that and I just really like how it turned out. And I also used the tile or the rock tile that came with fitness stuff in this bathroom once again and here I was just trying to because I just felt like something was off so I was just trying different floor and wallpaper combinations just to find something that I thought worked well and then in the end I just ended up using I think a different flooring from Spotty than what I had at first and then I just stuck with the white rock tile type wallpaper and uh, mixed in some of the light blues that I used in the laundry room and I was pretty happy with that. And with this build, I also kind of rediscovered that wallpaper from fitness stuff because I think I used it, I think I've only used it in like one build and that was that gym I made using the stuff from fitness stuff like over a year ago, I think. And for whatever reason, for whatever reason I just completely forgot that this wallpaper existed and just rediscovered it when I was working on this build. And I definitely got to use it more often because it's just a really nice wallpaper. I think it would also work well as a backsplash in a really modern kitchen possibly. Like I haven't tried that yet, but I think it could have worked really well in a kitchen as well. So I mean, that might've been something to try in the kitchen of this house, but I think what I did worked pretty well because I did like how the white on the top of the wallpaper I used blended with the white on the wallpaper I used on the rest of the wall. So it just looks continuous, which is um, what I wanted. Like I think that looks a bit better than if I had put this wallpaper in. This bathroom does have kind of a weird layout there. I don't know if I'd say it's really weird, but it's kind of, disjointed I guess because you walk in and then you got the sinks and the bathtub and then you have to go through this narrow area to get to the shower and then there's like a separate little room off to the side for the toilet but that's just kind of how it ended up because I also wanted to have two of those closets in here because you know in a lot of nicer homes like this you'd have 
large walk-in closets, you know, like usually a couple of them. So I just wanted to include that in here and we do have those closets that came with get together, of course. So that just felt like something good to fit in here. So I use the really nice, larger, modern ones, which I typically don't use because usually I just use the two by one closets that, you know, I usually don't want to take up a ton of space with these. I also raised up a candle and stuck it on top of the bathtub, which you can see here just to add to the effect of this being a relaxing oasis within this house because I can just imagine it being very peaceful to come home at the end of the day and light a candle and take a nice relaxing bubble bath in this bathroom. But we are almost done with the bathroom, just figuring out the furniture situation with a separate toilet room. So I was debating whether I wanted to have the hamper in the, like I thought for a minute about putting the hamper in the toilet room and then that little um, bath hutch or whatever you would call it out in the main part of the bathroom. But I realized it did make a whole lot of sense because you're probably not going to be getting dressed and undressed in the toilet room. Um, although it doesn't really matter with this game because they'll just kind of put it into whichever hamper, no matter where they get addressed in the house, which is nice. But we are done with the bathroom and are on to the regular, like the, the bedroom part of the master suite now, which has a less light and bright color scheme than the bathroom because I put this bed down. I liked the, the color scheme of it and I wanted to work with that for the bedroom. So on the wall behind the bed, we have the wallpaper that came with fitness stuff, but in this time in more of a beige color and then we have a darker blue color on the rest of the walls and I really like how that looks. And I also like how the skylight looks in this room. Like you can just see the light shining on the bed right now, which just looks really beautiful. Like I always like seeing how the light looks at different times of the day in here. Although in real life, I imagine having a skylight like that would actually be really annoying. Cause I guess depending on where your house is positioned and which direction it faces and all of that, like you're, you might end up with sunlight in your face when it when the morning comes around. I mean, with a sky, with a sky like that big, like you're probably going to get it right in your face pretty early on, which might not be good if you're someone who likes to sleep in. Like that would probably like at first, it, like if I, if I lived in a house like this, at first I'd probably be like, oh, this is amazing, this is beautiful. And then after getting woke up, woken up at like five in the morning or six in the morning by sun in my face, might not be so enthused by that. And also. Like I think in real life that would probably make the room get hotter, I guess, unless there's like some kind of more UV resistant glass that kept some of the heat out, but I don't know how well that would actually work. So the, the room might also kind of become a little bit of an oven with a skylight that big, unless you had some kind of cover for it. So while well, it's pretty, I think in real life it might not be quite as practical. It would be really pretty to look up and see the stars through that at night though. Um, but with the furnishing of this room, I was trying to go for a modern yet elegant look, of course. So that's why I picked that four poster bed from City Living, which I really like, cause it just, it just has a very nice, elegant feel to it. But at the same time, it's very modern. It doesn't feel like a super dated four post bed. So yeah, that's one that I like using. I think we're actually getting pretty close to being finished with this room. I just made this TV area off to the side cause I wouldn't have a TV somewhere in that room but I couldn't really place it directly across from the bed because that's where I put the dresser. And I like that spot for the dresser. So I decided to place it across from where that chair I had off to the side was. So I guess if you want to watch TV in the room, you can sit in that, like the Sims can sit in the chair and watch from there. They might be able to actually sit in the bed and watch from there as well. Although I don't think that would really be an ideal viewing angle, but we are on to the half bathroom now. So this is kind of like the half bathroom off of the main area. So if you had guests and such, this would be the bathroom that they use to their business. And then there's also another bathroom behind it, which is a pool bathroom. Because I noticed on the floor plan, they had they had this bathroom here. Like I think there wasn't the half bathroom that I put in. I think that was kind of like part of the study, but I wanted the study to just be a square room. And I thought it'd be useful to have a half bathroom that wasn't attached to a bedroom at all. That was just more so something for guests. So I stuck that in. And then we've got the weird pool bathroom, which is just this kind of random and unnecessary thing. But I also like the idea of it. So that's like a bathroom that guests could use a shower, although there is a guest bedroom. So I don't know, like that might not be necessary, but I don't know if there's like someone just coming over to swim and that's it, then this could be a bathroom they use. I mean, there's just an unnecessary amount of bathrooms in this house, but I don't know. I just, I just felt like doing that. Like I felt this is like, a, this is a house that, um, you know, it would make sense for it to have a ton of bathrooms. It's a very, very fancy, very large house. So there are six bathrooms in total with this house because we got the half bathroom, we got the pool bathroom, and then all four of the bedrooms have their own bathroom attached to them, uh, which would be kind of cool in real life. And also another thing I liked about those bathrooms were that both of them were two stories tall. So they just have crazy high ceilings. And that was because of how the, 
whole open like how I um, laid out the whole open area for the second floor like I kind of went over that part of it a little bit so I just walled it off and made it part of the bathrooms but now we're on to the study which I'm pretty happy with so my original plan for the study was to do the kind of layout where you have the desk in the middle of the room and then you have two living chairs across from it so it looks kind of like a home office where like someone would see clients and that kind of a deal but I've done that quite a few times so I wanted to do a different sort of layout with this one so I did this layout here where you have two desks that are placed back to back so it's less like it has less of that you know home business office where you see clients and more of like a family computer area kind of a feel so um the teen bedroom because there's a child bedroom and a teen bedroom upstairs the teen bedroom has its own computer but then the child's bedroom does not so I imagine that these are the computers that the parents would use and, and also that the child would use when they need to use a computer. So it's just kind of space that the whole family can go into and use rather than just like one person's office where they do their business. So we have the two desks over here. I also placed a little ottoman. And then over on this side, we just have a couple of chairs, which is kind of like a reading area because we do have that bookshelf. And I like the color scheme of this room because we do of course have some greens, but then I also made these chairs the really bright pink color that they come in because I wanted to tie them into the painting that I placed across. Like I wanted to mix something else in other than a green or a blue and I just really love how that looks and I like how that painting pops against the the black wall that it's up against. And I also really like how the chairs pop against the black wall that they're up against and then we just added that other painting from City Living in here which I think also tied in with things nicely. And I'm just trying to figure out the rug situation because it ended up being like it, the room was arranged in a way where it wasn't really clear how we should place the rugs. Like it didn't really look right to have it just in the center of the room and circular rug didn't also look quite right, right in here. So I just used this rug from City Living and I believe I changed it to green to tie in the chairs that we have across the room. And yeah, that is pretty much it for this room. Just adding some different decorations here on these shelves just to make it look a little bit more filled in. So we just got some extra books. We got that plant, which I think looks really nice like I just really like that plan it's just a very elegant looking plan that I stuck this little cat statue up in here to look like a bookend for those books like just like something to prop them up because in real life they're not really going to stand up stand up like that um and then just trying to figure out what to stick here in this corner to finish the room off so I just went with that standing lamp because I figured had enough plants in like I didn't want to make it too symmetrical by sticking another potted plant in the other corner of the room because I, I don't know, like I do that sometimes, but I don't always like how it looks to have plants in the, you know, like opposing corners of the room, if that makes sense. Cause it, you know, if you use the same plant, it looks too symmetrical. And then if you use a different plant, sometimes that just looks weird. So I decided to put something completely different in, but now we're on to what I imagine to be the guest room. So this room wasn't really furnished in a very personalized manner, but I just decided to make it a guest room because I felt like it's a location wasn't really the most private because it is off to the side from the living area so it's private in that way in terms of where it is in the house but it's also right off the pool area like you have a sliding glass door which has a view of the bed so I felt like it's not a room that would really be someone's bedroom but if you need an extra bedroom in this house like you want to have a family with more than four or five sims then this will be a, a room to turn into a different room for another child so like as it is, I think it could also work well for the room of a young adult or maybe like a grandparent or something like that. But you could always just refurnish it to suit it for like a child sim or a teen or something along those lines if you need that extra bedroom. I mean, it probably would be more useful as a room for a sim who lives in the household rather than as a guest room because, you know, your sims don't usually have guests who stay over. I guess unless like for storytelling purposes you made it so a sim was visiting, so... In that case, it could be good to have this room. But I also really like the color scheme of this room because it just feels very calming and warm and inviting. And I just like how the peach on the walls looks with the wallpaper that came with, like with that rock wallpaper. I just think it looks so nice together and it looks nice with the color of the bed and the, the colors of the painting. So I think this bedroom is actually my favorite bedroom in this house. And I think the second favorite is the child's bed, child bedroom that's upstairs. And then after that, I think it's the master bedroom. And then lastly is the teen bedroom. Cause I'll talk about a bit more about it once I get up there, but I think that one was definitely my least favorite of the rooms in the house. I mean, I'm still fairly happy with how it turned out, but um, it definitely was my least favorite, but um, you know, I'll, I'll talk more about that once we get to it. So right now I'm working on the guest bathroom and it has kind of a black and white color scheme. And as I was doing this, I was kind of wishing that we had 
a more modern shower tub combo because we have that one, which I mean, it's fairly modern, but I don't think it fits well into a house like this. And then we also have the one that came with base game, but that feels more like an outdated 90s bathtub, like with the tile in it. So it'd be kind of cool if we had something that was a shower tub combo, but was a little bit more modern because I wanted something that went with this house that wasn't either a standalone bathtub or a standalone shower. So hopefully that's something we get in the future. Like that'll just be something neat to have. But we are on to the second floor now. So I'm just making this little sitting area at the top of the stairs here. So it's kind of like a second living room. And I kept with a similar color scheme to what we had downstairs with the light and bright colors and the greens. And I don't really think I put them any blues in here, but it's, it's more so, you know, more so like a light green color scheme, which feels very springy. Like I think the colors in the main area of this house just have a very spring or summery kind of feel to them, which I really like. Activity wise, there isn't really much to do in this area. There's just a bookshelf. So I imagine that would be a good reading area. And then I also placed a few pet items in there. So I think I went ahead and placed a, a pet bed in there, like one of the smaller ones. And then I also put a scratching post up here. So I, I think that's the only spot in the house I really placed a pet bed. Like I probably should have placed one elsewhere in the house, but I don't know this. So like, this isn't really the most pet friendly house, but there is some stuff here to start you off if you do have a pet living in this house. But if you do, then you might want to just add a few more things in. But then again, if you, if you don't end up putting family in here that has a pet, then it's fairly easy to get rid of everything and not have those pet items around the house. So pretty easy to customize it whichever way you want to go. And then over here, I'm just adding in this table with a painting over it, or I think I actually ended up putting a mirror over it. Cause I wasn't really sure what to do with the space. Like I was thinking about having the bookshelf over here, but I liked having the bookshelf over on the other side. Cause then if I didn't have it there that I wasn't sure what to do with that side over there. So doing this just ended up working and yeah, that's pretty much it for this area out here. So now we're moving on to the child bedroom, which as I said, is my second favorite bedroom in this house. It also has a skylight off of it, which just looks really nice. Um, the team bedroom is the one that does not have a skylight and that's just because it was partially under where the levels of the half wall change, if that makes sense. Like there's like up above it, there's a half wall cutting through part of the ceiling above it. So it just wouldn't have worked well to add in a skylight. Like it would have just ended up in kind of weird spot in the room. So I just decided to not add that in, but this room has a really nice color scheme. It's, it's more of an orange and pink color scheme with a few blues thrown in. And I feel like I've been doing a lot of child rooms lately with orange, but um, this one's orange and pink, which is slightly different than the orange and blue ones I've been doing recently. But um, I think I do tend to go for orange and blue because they are complementary colors. So they just look really nice together, but I do like the mix of peach and orange in this room. Like I wasn't sure how that was going to look at first, but after a bit, I was like, yeah, this looks pretty good. We'll just stick with it. I think that is the same peach that I used in the guest bedroom downstairs. So maybe that's why I like this room so much because for whatever reason, like when I was building this house, I was just kind of into that color. Like I just like the look of it. And I also added in one of those pet cages from my first pet stuff, which I don't think I've used in the house before because the builds I've done recently that I've had kids rooms in them haven't had enough room for it, but I like how it looks in there. I can't remember if I added in the hamster or the hedgehog. Yeah, I don't know which one that is, but I just imagine this as being the room of a kid who really loves animals and they wanted to have their own hamster or hedgehog or whatever. And maybe like the, the cat who lives in the household is more so their cat. Like they're really attached to the cat and the cat's like their little buddy. Cause I mean, they do have a cat bedspread and then we also have some cat related things on the curtains. And I also added one of those large stuffed cat toys in here. So this is definitely the room of a kid with a cat lover trait. And I imagine that the parents didn't originally didn't want to have pets in this house but the youngest kid eventually wore them down and they let them get a cat and also let them get a hamster or whatever it is that the, that's in this cage. So that's part of why like all the cat stuff downstairs is kind of tucked off to the side because the parents are very neat and wanted everything to be in its place. So I imagine that the parents or maybe, or at least like one of the parents have the neat traits. So that is why everything in this house is so tidy and put together. I mean, also they probably have a maid because I mean, if you live in a house like this, you, you probably have enough money to hire maid or that some of, that kind of a thing. And I just realized, I, I don't think I've ever hired a maid for my Sims in this game. Like that's not something I ever really think to do for some reason. Like even when I have Sims living in a nicer house, I just never think of hiring a maid or a butler for them. Like that's something I should probably play around with in the future. Like whenever I happen to play with Sims who have a lot of money again, which 
I usually don't do because I always find it fun to like more fun to play with Sims who are struggling a little bit. Like I find that more of a fun challenge than plays it, playing with Sims who have a little a lot of money and can get whatever they want. But we are working on the bathroom for this bedroom now and with this bathroom even though the tile like the flooring and the wallpaper of, of it is very light and white and modern I try to give this bathroom more fun and colorful touches just to go with the personality of the sim who has this room because I imagine they'd want to pick out fun colors for the curtain for the shower curtains and like add in some more colorful decorations to the room so it doesn't quite go with the like the the sink and the toilet and the walls and floors and all that but yeah, I think it suits who has the room, but that's pretty much it for this room. So now we're on to the last bedroom, which as I said, is the teen room. And this one ends up being very bright and bold. And I thought about toning it down and I did go back in and tone it down a little bit like after I finished with the house, but it still is very bright because I just wanted to have fun and use bolder colors in this room because with child and teen rooms, I sometimes like to use more in your face and bright colors than I would in living areas because it, it like most of the time it won't really look that good if you use like a bright cyan or, or that kind of a color all over the living room of a house because you know usually that's not the color choice people make. I mean sometimes you have like an accent wall but you know usually the whole room isn't like neon colors or anything like that but I think that's something that does work in bedrooms which tend to be smaller spaces and are a bit more personalized so I just want to do that with this room so this room has a bright blue and bright like snot green or maybe not snot green like I don't think that's that the curtains are quite snot green but I guess more like Nickelodeon slime green like they kind of remind me of the color of that a little bit but just a very bright green and then I end up changing the blue on or the the white on the walls to be a bright blue but the way in which I toned this room down later on was that I replaced the bright blue with a slightly more toned down version of it because I used the bright cyan blue, um, which I felt like it, I felt like it was something about this room is a little bit much, but I still want it to be very bright. So I just replaced the green and the brighter blue I had with a more toned down version of it. And I think that helped a bit and made it look a little bit better. And other than that, I think I changed the swatch of that one end table next to the bed to be a lighter beige color. And I think that's about it that I really did. Like once the house is done, because sometimes like after I finish a build, I'll just go back through and look over everything and make some small changes and try to catch some mistakes that I made because sometimes I'll just notice where, you know, I forgot to change the color of like one little thing, you know, like if I'm changing colors of columns or something like that, I might miss one and, and that kind of a deal. So I usually go through and do a little bit of a detail check once I finish the build just to make sure I like everything and then sometimes I'll end up doing some smaller changes just on my own that I don't record. Like usually that's nothing that's a big deal, but that might be why sometimes you download one of my builds and you'll notice like a small difference between what it looked like in the video and how it turns out at the end or you know like in the fly through something might look slightly different than it did when I worked on it in the building part of the video. But even though I said this is my least favorite bedroom in the house, I still like it. I just like it less than the other ones and I think part of that was because I was going back and forth on whether I should tone things down like make the bed a neutral color or make the walls a neutral color because even though I like the color scheme of the room I just worried that it was too much and maybe I needed to put some more neutral things into it but in the end I think it turned out fine. I think the changes I made to the wall color and changing that one table to being a like a more neutral color helped a lot because I just thought it was a little much with like the bright blue on the bed and the bright blue wardrobe and then the bright blue table so I think that was something that just helped a lot but Anyway, we're on to the bathroom that went with this bedroom, which is the last room of the house. And this one I was going to make more personalized with the room, but then for whatever reason, like as I got towards the end of it, I decided to not do that and just make it look a little bit more neutral in color, which maybe I shouldn't have done, but I just wasn't really happy with how it was turning out when I was trying to like mix in some oranges and stuff with it. So I thought it'd just be better to keep things in here a tiny bit more neutral. But since we are almost at the end of the building part of the video, there is of course a link to download in the description and stuff in there on how to find a game as I mentioned in the last part and that's all I have to say so I'm just going to go ahead and leave off here with that. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video.